Many a times in our day-to-day -day lives, we tend to predict things. For example, what are the chances your favorite football club will win on a particular night? Or will it probably rain today? Or what are the chances mom is not going to ask you to finish your veggies? Okay, let us not get too ahead of ourselves that probability is zero. Okay, or say, what are the chances you will attend a certain book fair? The examples can go on. But there is an uncertainty or a probability of these things happening. There is no sure short answer there. And we predict the expected outcome of certain things based on our day-to-day -day observations or our past experiences. Now, like I told you, sometimes this very concept, what we are going to learn, but with the help of numbers. Are we ready? I hope you are 100% ready to get started. I don't want you to say, uh, maybe we should start or probably we can start now. We are starting. Okay. All right. So there is no numerical measure for your experiences or observations, right? Yes, you can numerically measure the uncertainty and that is what we call as probability. Probability is extensively used in the field of physics, commerce, medical science and weather forecast. French mathematician Pascal and Fermat both have developed this probability theory. They started off with an experimental approach and then the theoretical approach was developed. And in this video, we are going to study the experimental approach to probability. So until now, you must have thought experiments are confined to laboratories. Let me break that notion of yours and indulge in an experiment using numbers. Take the example of a coin. What are the chances of getting heads or tails? You will say 50-50, right? What does 50-50 mean? It means there's a 50% chance of getting heads or a 50% chance of getting tails. And why do you say that? Well, most probably because of your past experiences, correct? But we can cross check it with the experiment. So take a coin and toss it 10 times. Now note the number of times you get heads and record your observation and calculate the fraction. That is number of times you get heads upon the number of times you toss the coin. Now, Toss the coin 20 times and record your observations for how many times you got heads in this round and calculate the same fraction like earlier, that is number of times you got heads upon the number of times you toss the coin. You will observe that as you increase the number of tosses, the value of the fraction becomes very close to 0.5. So by observation or by practical approach, we say that the probability of getting heads or tails is 50-50. Let us try another experiment. Let us use a rolling dice this time. Say you roll a dice 10 times. Note the number of times you get a 6 in the next round. Roll the dice 20 times and record the number of times you get 6 again. You will see that as you increase the number of rolls, the chance of getting a 6 is closer to 1 by 6. Now, from these two experiments that we just did, let's try and derive the expression to find the probability as well as define some related terms. The experiments or the activities is termed as a trial. Tossing a coin is a trial, rolling a dice is a trial or an experiment. We define a trial as an action which results in one or several outcomes. When I toss a coin, there are only two outcomes, heads and tails. Similarly, when I roll a dice, I can either get one, two, three, four, five, six, correct? There is no seventh outcome here. Okay, coming to the next term, which is event. Now an event is defined as a collection of favorable outcomes. When while tossing a coin, my favorable outcome was getting a head and while rolling a dice, my favorite outcome was getting a six. 
Now I define the empirical probability of the event P of E is equal to the number of trials in which the event happened upon the total number of trials. For example, let us assume that in the experiment of tossing a coin 10 times, heads appeared 4 times and tails appeared 6 times. Now if I want to find the probability of getting heads, let us define the event of getting heads as E and the probability of event E is equal to the number of trials in which head appears up on the total number of trials. And we already know that heads appeared 4 times. So numerator is 4 and as we have tossed the coin 10 times, so the total number of trials is 10. So this fraction is 4 upon 10. And hence, the probability of getting heads is 4 upon 10. Well, I think that is enough of theory and examples for us now. Let us solve some numericals using the definition for the empirical probability. Okay, here's the first one. A coin is tossed 1500 times. Yeah, and it showed heads 800 times and tails 700 times. Now our task is to compute the probability for first getting heads and number two getting tails. Okay, let the event of getting head be defined as E. Then the probability of E is the number of times we got heads upon the total number of tosses and that gives us 800 upon 1500. So 800 upon 1500 will give us 0.53. Now, let A be defined as the event for getting tails. Then, probability of number of times we got tails on tossing will be given as number of times we got tails upon the total trials. Number of tails is 700 and total trials is 1500. 700 upon 1500 will give us 0.47. So the probability of getting tails is 0.47 and the probability of getting heads is 0.53. Now two coins are tossed and the results were two heads showed up 200 times. The one head one tail combination showed up 180 times and there were 120 occurrences of two tails. We need to find a total of four things. First, the probability of getting two heads. Second, the probability of getting no heads, that is tails on both coins. Third, the probability of getting one head and one tail. And finally, the probability of getting at most one heads. So let A denote the event of getting two heads, then the probability of A is number of times the result was two heads upon the total number of trials. Well, we know from the information given to us that the result was two heads 200 times and the total number trials is 500, correct? So the probability of getting two heads is 200 upon 500 which gives us 0 0.4. Okay, now coming to the second part of the sum. Let B denote the event of getting no heads. This means we get both tails. Now, event B is the same as getting two tails. So probability of B is the number of trials of getting two tails up on the total trials. Number of getting two tails is 120. Upon the total trials are 500. So it is 120 upon 500 which is equal to 0.24. Okay, now the third question is to find the probability of getting one head and one tail. So let C be the event of getting one head and one tail. So probability of C occurring is the number of trials of event C upon the total trials and that will give us 180 upon 500 which calculates to 0 0.36. And coming to the fourth and the final part of the numerical, let's denote event D as event of getting at most one head. Now at least one heads mean I want a maximum of one heads. 
which means you can have zero or no heads or you can have one head okay so the total number of trials for event d is the number of trials that resulted in no heads plus the number of trials that resulted in one head and if you check we have already calculated these numbers which are 120 plus 180 and that equals 300 so now the probability of event d occurring is the number of trials of d upon the total trials which is 300 upon 500 and that gives us 0 0.6 so this is equal to 300 upon 500 is equal to 0 0.6 Okay, so this four part sum is done with. I hope you're getting the hang of it slowly. Tutamate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.